Well, hello there. Um, I uh, was talking to somebody this morning and I asked them, hey, uh, they have a, a child who's, um, I think, third grade, which my child's also in third grade. Um, and he said, you know, what happened to teaching history? It seems to me that we're spending um, a lot of time teaching about uh, you know geography. They teach social you know social studies now to the children at a very young age, but they do little about history. And uh, you know my daughter, uh, who's uh, 13, she's had very little history uh, up until the age of 13. In fact, I asked her. I said, D "Have you uh, ever spent time reading the Declaration of Independence?" You know, I I, I said you should take a look at it. I said, well, she says, well, to me, uh, Dad, you know, it's not required. Uh, they, they don't make us do that. I go, but you should do it. You should do it just because you should, you know, learn uh, about what was said at that time, uh, why we left King George. Um, so I, I, you know, advise everyone that they should think about talking to their local school districts and asking them, is the Constitution in the, the local curriculum and at what age do they teach it. Um, also they should ask, you know, do they teach the Declaration of Independence? Do they teach about what happened before the revolution in this country? Do they uh, teach about, you know, things like the Stamp, Stamp Act or writs of assistance by King George? Um, you know, writs of assistance is a very in interesting uh, thing. Um, at the time of the Stamp Act, uh, you had to have a, the king's image and you know stamp on every single document, uh, bill of sale, anything that was was to be published, uh, whether it was uh, you know uh, you know a, a book, uh, any kind of pamphlet, booklet, handout, whatever it was, a bill, uh, poster, everything had to have the king's approval, or else it couldn't be posted, it couldn't be published, it couldn't be given, and uh, they called that the Stamp Act. Now, at that time, the uh, British soldiers were allowed to basically write their own search warrants. They were given writs of assistance. And I, I find it so funny because, you know, uh, a few years back we had this Patriot Act uh, to, you know, it's a, it's a great term. Um, but basically, you know, you're either with us or you're against us, and of course, Everyone wants to be a patriot, especially when, the, when there's a time of crisis in the country. Uh, so basically they fear-mongered uh, the Congress into signing the Patriot Act. And many of the people said, oh, well, you, you know, George Bush II is going to take care of us. You know, King George will take care of us. Oh, we can trust him. Well, you really couldn't trust King George Bush. Uh, because what he did was he put through the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act was the uh, Congress people who were allowed to read it were only given were, were allowed to read it, but they were only given 15 minutes to read it, and it's 315 pages long, I believe. Uh, take you a day or two for most people to read that, um, and then to find reasons and things within the Act to uh, you know have you know issues with. It would probably take even longer. So, of course, I'm sure some things are very glaring and they stand out at you. Well, one of the things that really stands out with me is writs of assistance. Federal agents are allowed to handwrite search warrants. They do not have to go through a judge. And if they feel there's probable cause that you have something uh, in your possession, in your property, in your car, uh, they can come and just search. At, at will because you might be a terrorist you might be a subversive you might be a lot of things you might be a libertarian you might be somebody who talks out on YouTube you could be just anybody who has an issue with uh, you know the federal government and of course federal agents get their paychecks from the federal government so for them they're just doing their job so you know I have a problem with the Patriot Act I have a problem with a lot of things going on in our government and for me I feel that we must resist we must do our best to resist. And I think the best way for us to resist is to squeeze the money out. Um, you know, if it means hurting the economy, you know, because apparently the government takes care of everyone, uh, then it means hurting the economy. But in, in that, that sense, um, we should 
you know, do our best to squeeze the government. Whenever you can earn a dollar without paying a tax, go ahead and do it because that's a dollar that you're keeping out of the out of the hands of the government. Um, you know, you need to start just bartering, bartering, trading with people. Uh, you know, if you can uh, trading time, trading uh, abilities, trading you know fair use, and you know, and this is the way that we can literally you know bring down the government. Uh, we need to literally bankrupt this government because this government is not working for the people. It is literally working over us and against us. So, you know, that's all I have for now. But I will show you one thing that I found today while I was going through some books that were donated to me. And I thought that was really cute. Home of Dogs Christmas Tree. And it was published quite a while back. And I'll turn a few pages as I let the video run out. Um, and I think it's really cute. Uh, so anyways, I'll show it to you. Uh, I don't know what page that is, but Hobo Dogs Christmas Tree. And it looks like it's published in 1983 and printed in the United States, believe it or not. Um, so, anyways, I, I thought it was really cute. By the long tracks west, the wind blew and the snow fell. The s smoke rose from the little shack made out of old lumber and tin from the junkyard. Hobo Dog sat inside playing the guitar and singing his song to himself. Scrounging for drunk junk, riding the rails, a drifter I'll always be. But now winter is here and Christmas is near and home is the place for me. <laughs> Hobo stopped singing. Suddenly he glanced at the calendar on his wall. I'll just read it out until I have to turn off the video. Golly, it's the day before Christmas, Hobo said and I don't ha have a Christmas tree. Hobo put on his boots, his mittens, and the jacket and scarf he had found at a garage sale. Then he strapped on his grandfather's old skis and set off to find a Christmas tree. Suddenly, woo! A train whistle blew, woo! <laughs> Hobo dog, a voice called out. Where are you going? It was Hobo's friend, the engineer. I'm looking for a Christmas tree, said Hobo. Hop aboard. I'll take you where the trees are, replied the engineer. Now, I don't know when this video is going to run out, but I'm going to keep on reading because I, I think this is an exciting book. The train roared down the tracks. The wheels went clickety-clack, clickety-clack, and the cold wind whistled through Hobo's whiskers. Man, oh man. There was a forest. The train slowed down. Hobo waved goodbye to the engineer and skied off to find his Christmas tree. Some trees were too big. Some trees were too small. Then deep in the forest, Hobo came to a clearing. There was a Christmas tree just right. Hobo chopped it down and slung it over his shoulder. That's a fun, fun strong dog. <laughs> By then, night was falling. And it was time to head home. Hobo skied with a tree. That's one amazing dog. I want that dog. He might not be a hobo anymore. But which way should he go? Hobo wandered in circles under the big trees. He was lost. Then he saw a light far away. Soon there will be more lights. A town. Everywhere people were hustling and bustling. They were doing their last minute shopping. Well, I've been there. In the store window, Hobo saw a Christmas tree covered with bright decorations. It had a star on top. I wish my tree could be like that, Hobo said. He reached in his pocket for some money. All he had was six cents. That's all I have is six cents. <laughs> that would never buy a Christmas decoration, sadly. Hobo headed out of town. At the edge of town there was a steep hill. At the bottom of the hill where the railroad tra where the railroad tracks. Hobo started skiing down the hill. Faster and faster he went. I think this must be the last page. Yeah. Uh, whoomp! Hobo hit a bump. Hobo went flying up, 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 over a fence, and thump!